Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back through Day of the Crypto News and Analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Hedera or HBAR. And I do want to talk to you guys about some use cases, some updates, and overall just you know some news so sit back relax and before we fully jump on into this video i just want to ask you guys to please leave a like it does help the channel grow immensely it takes a couple seconds and i do greatly appreciate it but with that being said let's just jump in and let's talk about this market so the market sentiment is pretty much you know bitcoin trading sideways kind of a boring you know market realistically speaking some old coins are doing some nice movements um, but we know that Hedera is, I don't even think it's actually in like the top like 50 right now for, or actually it's right there. So, but it's still not in the top 50 for the movements on the 24 hour span. Uh, we actually have seen a little bit of a decline in price, uh, trading volume, not looking too good overall. Um, but we have been sitting a little bit stable, just kind of trading sideways at this you know point that we were at. Um, I would like us to break over that 35 cents. I mean, you guys clearly see the resistance here as we, you know, peaked at it about three times now. Uh, it's also sort of the same resistance point that we've seen back here before we went to the recent all-time high. Obviously, it's going to take us a little bit of time to break that. Uh, I do want a little bit of a stronger RSI. It looks a little bit good. Trading volume, though, like if you guys look at the volume on the bottom, you guys clearly see that the volume is terrible right now for HBAR. Uh, we want a lot more volume. So right now, currently... The main thing to focus on is a lot more volume flowing into HBAR. Uh, currently on the Bitcoin price chart, which I haven't taken a look at too much, uh, we are trading along you know, this little bit of a resistance point. I mean, we have not broken officially over it and we have not held it significantly either. We do see that we are seeing a little bit of a death cross down there on the RSI. Uh, I wouldn't pay attention to it too much, but you do see every single time that we do cross it, uh, we have a little bit of an impulse and it could be an impulse up or it could be an impulse down because we even see back here where we had that nice cross. It was a sharp decline, you know, a little bit of an incline that led to a decline. And uh, just recently, though, we had a nice strong incline off of the RSI. But I'm not expecting too much, you know, bullish price action movements just yet for HBAR. Like I said, with, you know, on my XRP video, I do want to see Bitcoin dominance actually have a nice impulse back to around like 45%. Uh, I think that that will be fairly good for us to have that nice extended bull run pattern play out, uh, which will obviously bring Bitcoin price to around possibly, you know, 53 to 56K. I think a lot of these spotlight will be on Bitcoin at that point. Of course, then, you know, I, I, I would like to see us reclaim around the 70k level or possibly you know make a new all-time high you know that would be fine with me but i know a lot of people have been calling for the all for the you know top to be in on bitcoin i just don't think it is but with all of that in mind i do want to talk to you guys about the hbar overall ecosystem we are seeing a lot more updates happening within this uh in fact we just seen hash access actually being launched uh, it's actually pretty interesting because this is an exclusive project that has 1000 randomized uh, Mex mint it on the Hedera Hashgraph network. Select from three different rarity levels or claim your uh, place in the ranks with a unique one of a kind uh, or one of one. So I think that this is actually going to be very interesting to see. I mean, overall, this is actually a fairly nice website. It's a you know pretty clean UI, very easy to understand, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I do think that stuff like this is what we want to see being built on the Hedera ecosystem. I think that this is something that could get very interesting very fast. I mean, this looks, in my opinion, better than OpenSea, which I've always, you know, whenever I compare an NFT collection or an NFT project, I always kind of compare it to, you know, OpenSea in terms of the UI and stuff because it is, in my mind, very key to have a strong UI for individuals, especially, you know, those who are newer to, you know, this industry to really kind of understand or, you know, just have that ease of access, which this looks very good to me. Um, I'm actually excited for more of the NFT ecosystem to be built out on Hedera. I think that this will also lead us to NFT.com being launched very soon, which will obviously lead us back to retail demand kind of growing. Just in general, uh, we did see this, uh, which Hedera did get mentioned on. This is from CNBC. Uh, global crypto adoption rose by over 880% as of 2021, as per a report by Blockchain Data Platform, Chainalysis, and India stands second in terms of global crypto adoption 
Now, if we do skip a little bit ahead, we do see, you know, crypto in 2021, the year gone by, you know, $3 trillion market cap, 880% global adoption. We're also seeing, you know, second in terms of global crypto adoption for India, 3.9% global ownership rate, 300 million, you know, worldwide users, which, you know, really kind of shows you how early we are. And of course, we do see crypto users only 28 million in North, of, uh, North America. I mean, guys, this is absolutely ridiculous how early we are. Uh, crypto adoption as well. In the U.S., we've only seen 8.31%. I mean, look at these percentages. This is pretty much nothing, to be honest with you. Uh, and of course, crypto in 2021, businesses accepting crypto payments, 18,000 total value locked in DeFi, $100 billion. And of course, we do see all-time highs in 2021. H bar is definitely listed here. Now, of course, would I say that this is very bullish for us? Not really. I mean, it, it's good for retail individuals to understand our name and stuff, but it's nothing too significant. And of course, Bitcoin market share in 2021, January 2021 is 70%, December is 40%. So a little bit, you know, we are seeing a lot of altcoins kind of grasp a large portion of the market. And we do see our VC investments in crypto. This has rose significantly, especially comparing it to 2018, which I suspect that this is all going to continue to grow. Uh, Series A deals 121% up. Uh, this is actually emerges as the second fastest growing startup sector as well. So, you know, we are growing extremely, you know, fast. Uh, we even see NFTs in 2021, $17 billion total sales estimated. Um, so, yeah, I mean, NFTs are, are, are crazy. And the rise of the new metaverse as well, $4.7 billion capital influx. Uh, so watch for a lot of these major, you know, markets, especially Web 3.0, especially, you know, NFTs and also the metaverse, because I do believe that Hedera is perfectly positioned to disrupt those major markets. We actually see here, instead of presenting originals of physical documents, the employees digitally asserted their identity and provided a digital driver's license in the form of a verifiable credential, all from a wallet on their phone. So as you guys know, I love to talk more so about tokenization and NFTs. And a lot of people just think, well, it's just JPEGs on a screen, so who cares? I'm not going to pay $100 for a JPEG or whatever the case may be. Um, but it's actually so much bigger than that. You know, when I talk about tokenization taking over, pretty much everything being tokenized, this is what I mean. Okay, this is from Miko Me. Of course, they are, you know, a pilot with Hedera that, well, I shouldn't say a, a pilot, but they are a partner with Hedera and they actually have a pilot that provides practical insights into the benefits they bring for employee onboarding and workplace credential checking. But this is what I want to see. Okay, I want to see tokenization of your digital identity, your, you know, driver's license, stuff like that, that you could utilize for verifiable credentials, like something like this in the workplace that could streamline workplace, you know, pretty much workflows. It could even do, I mean, there's so much more to this than just, you know, workflows in general for the workplace and the work environment. Um, you know, in my mind, digital digitization and even tokenization is disruptive uh, in terms of streamlining many portions of everyday life. But this is just one, you know, huge use case. And of course, this is with Hedera and Miko Me. Also, we do see here from the Coupon Bureau, due to the three key technical features, universal coupons will be an even more powerful uh, on the channel promotional marketing tool, data centralization, real time serialization, global trade item number, GTIN validation as well. Also, with the Coupon Bureau, I know that we've been talking about it for a little bit of time. We've talked about how much transactional flow the Coupon uh, Bureau will bring. Um, but we also see that this is actually going to grow and grow and grow. We actually see here how the rise in grocery e-commerce is reshaping food marketing. I believe that when we're talking about e-commerce in general, especially for groceries and stuff like that, it's going to continue to grow. We even see here 62% of shoppers order groceries online, at least occasionally jumping from just 34% in February of 2020. So almost in, you know, one year, uh, or, well, actually more than one year, we've seen almost a rise in 2x. Okay, that's absolutely ridiculous. 29% of online grocery shoppers or shippers order once a week or more compared to 21% in February 2020. Online grocery shopping increased among all age groups with 78% of Gen Z, 88% of millennials, 36% of boomers, and 34% of mature shoppers doing so occasionally. And in my mind, this is going to continue to grow. And uh, we even see here, 
You know, a CMO at Schwann's, an affiliate of CJCJ Food Americas and responsible for brands including Red Baron, uh, Freshetta, uh, Bibigo, I hope, Annie Shuns, and Pagoda. My team and I have been wrestling with how to introduce new SKUs and products and consumers in this area or era of e-commerce. In my mind, e-commerce, especially in terms of groceries and, you know, just in general, all of this market, it's going to continue to prosper. And what are they going to need? digital coupons and who's going to provide that in my mind the coupon bureau now with this in mind we also see a lot of things happening with even SKU pay as well we even see our SKU x set to displace outdated coupon and settlement system that cost consumers billions of dollars in lost savings i just want you guys to understand if we're saving consumers billions of dollars this technology this use case alone is going to be worth billions of dollars uh, and of course, we know that SKU Pay is, or I shouldn't say SKU Pay, but SKU X is working with Hedera. Um, but this SKU Pay is going to really end coupon and promotional offer fraud, misredemption, settlement delays, and marketing uncertainty, powering anywhere, anytime offers. This is going to be huge. Now, I, I just discussed to you guys SKU X uh, yesterday, or SKU in general, um, and pretty much how big they are. But SKUX is definitely going to be a huge leading use case. We even see here uh, that, you know, uh, no-touch payments, which had increased to 69% of retailers. The U.S. is now the world's second largest market for mobile payments with $465.1 billion worth of transactions in 2020 and volume expected to grow to $698 billion in 2023. So, like I said, this is going to continue to grow and grow and grow, especially as individuals are kind of, you know, they want to get away from, you know, they don't want touch payments. They want to touchless payments where they don't have to touch the keypad. They don't want to, you know, they kind of want to stay away from germs and stuff because of COVID and stuff. But we just hear the powered by SKUX difference powers virtually any channel of consumer engagement, eliminates fraud and misredemption, daily processing and settlement. Uh, you know, retailers can be reimbursed daily, not in weeks or months. Unparalleled and immediate data visibility and control, intuitive and easy to use. This is going to be huge. And of course, when we're talking about these major companies, you know, we look at P&G, Prop, uh, Procter & Gamble. They are pretty much in everybody's house right now. Go look at your toilet paper. Go look at, you know, your tablecloth, uh, not your tablecloth, but your paper towels and stuff. It's all P&G products. This is a huge name in the game. QX is a huge, huge overall partnership with Hedera. It, it leads us into the, the retail world so quick. It streamlines that pretty much move into the retail world. And of course, we do see our blockchain technology improves data authentication and transparency in healthcare. So like I was saying, with NFTs, they are so much bigger than what everybody is seeing, okay? I know that, you know, coupons and stuff, yeah, to a lot of people, it's whatever, but how about healthcare? Okay, everybody needs healthcare. Everybody utilizes healthcare. We talk more so about a core. Okay, a core is exploring different ways to bring data authentication through blockchain into healthcare data. You know, they, they have two products, Hashlock and Rights Hash, which work with the idea of data verification through blockchain to simultaneously infuse blockchain and backend data, utilizing Hedera Hashgraph as the underlying distributed ledger technology protocol. Hashlock data sent, uh, stamps transactions in real time on Hedera to show public traceability and verification of transactions. Okay, and then we also looked at um, Rights Hash. Rights Hash is also pretty big. So let's actually kind of look into this. So we actually see that right here through NFTs, the authenticity of that information can be proven using the power of non-fungible tokens. NFTs are basically being considered a unique global reference to any digital asset such as commonly seen these days, a piece of art. But in my opinion, this is so much bigger than that. Okay, so first off, you know, with all of these major use cases, first off, this is all kind of moving into the healthcare scene, which we know is a massive market, a ton of demand. But we also looked at rights hash recently. I, I want to say that we looked at rights hash a, a, a while back. But rights hash is also very interesting because it tokenizes uh, on, uh, patients' rights or individuals' rights in general for the healthcare scene. But all of this is done through a DLT technology, aka Hedera, and it's all through NFTs, through non-fungible tokens. This is what I mean about tokenization. Okay. A sophisticated one-way, one-time encryption can be used to generate OPOC references to underlying protected health data. This is incredible. This is all, you know, in my mind, 
it, 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 it's secured on the highest grade security as well. So private information will not be stored on the public ledger. However, the NFTs provide a means for publicly, uh, publicly tracing and monitoring their associated transactions. This is great. This is incredible. And honestly, this is 100% disruptive. We even see the power of rights hash is the ability to associate these consent uh, agreements with their individual owner across any number of different applications through the use of NFTs and in real time provide the ability to trace and monitor activities related to them. I'm so excited for a lot of these use cases to be brought in. I'm excited for a lot of these to kind of blossom into the real world. These are not being utilized just yet in my opinion and even if they are we're not seeing the value behind them. I believe that once we do see regulations in the space, once we see mass adoption in the space, once we are no longer under the whelm of Bitcoin, a lot of these assets like Hedera are going to explode in value. And this is the year where we've seen a lot of these assets really taken over. We've seen companies like Swift. We've seen massive banks, financial institutions, huge names in the game moving in on crypto because they do see the value behind this technology so with that in mind i hope that you all enjoyed this video if you guys did definitely leave a like subscribe to notifications on if you guys want more free content you guys are more than welcome to follow me on twitter and join the free discord down in the description below as always i hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful it's been nick peace out guys